This is day one at uh, Nelson. We're here for the um, Great Perch Search. The object of the next possibly three days is to catch broodstock perch, both male and female. Yeah, Glenelg River, one of the, one of the great rivers in Victoria, no doubt. Yeah, beautiful spot. Great fishing. All he cares, anything you're worried about in the world, evaporated. This is just so different to what I do Monday to Friday. I sit behind the laptop, you know, wearing a suit every day, and this just gives me an opportunity to get out, you know, in the wilderness. It's just good fun too. Weather, the outdoors, what's not to like? <laughs> it's been something which has been great for the family, particularly the relationship between myself and the two sons. We've uh, fished together for 20 years now, since the, uh, the boys were 10, 12. Fishing has been the things that bonded us together. It's, it's fishing with mates, that, that's another thing. To be away in the camaraderie between you and uh, all the other guys. There's more than 700,000 recreational fishers in Victoria and a big part of this project is to improve recreational fishing by restoring native fish populations. So what we've been doing over the last few years is scoping out the opportunity to take broodfish from the wild and to initiate a breeding program with the view to stocking them into some of our freshwater and saline or brackish waters. We took a list of something like 20 odd lakes or candidate locations. We ended up with half a dozen lakes that we felt had real potential. The fish farming facilities in Victoria weren't there, so we looked at the New South Wales bass breeders. We identified a particular bass breeder there who was interested in estuary perch. We've collaborated with a whole bunch of recreational fishers, a lot of them tournament fishers, and we call that group the Great Perch Search Team. These guys are very professional in their outlook. They compete at the national level. They have all the equipment, technology, and those guys volunteered to help us out. Why well, support it? Because uh, I like to see our kids, grandkids, when they're old enough to fish, have some fish to catch. I reckon it's great to be here with the fisheries and you know working in conjunction with them and showing them that we set a pretty decent precedent. And even just having a chat to them and seeing what their strategy yeah. and what the plan is for the next 12, you know, 36 months. That's just, yeah, something really exciting. They've got some great things coming up. In the long run, you're going to get something back, you know, down the track. Grandkids and all that sort of thing are going to benefit from it. You know, everyone in the community is going to benefit. What it essentially did is brought fisheries managers and researchers closer to recreational fishers. So we developed some shared vision. Coming here and fishing with mates like Mike here and the other blokes that we normally fish against in tournaments is exciting because we're here this time as one. We're all here to do a job. We're not competing against one another. Hopefully you get a fish. Get you better get it in the boat. <laughs> oh. oh no. <laughs> it's a little brim. Hold it in. Hold him in. <laughs> Be happy with that Just too. Guy. Just a little brim on an atomic fat grub. We're using lures called vibration lures. So when they're being pulled up from the bottom, it makes a brrrr sound. It's always a challenge to, uh, to figure out where they are and what they're going to eat. Uh, great satisfaction when you work that out and you catch them. Oh, just a calculated guess. <laughs> we have too many lures in our tackle box and um, we just keep trying it until something maybe turned up that catches the fish and then we s stick with it, yeah. In the end, it just means again more fish like that guy there. Another medium sort of EP. Looks like it's got a bit of row on it, so that should be good for uh, up there at Naruma as well. The yellow line is the bottom, and all these little red boomerangs, if you like, uh, they're fish and they're packed together tight. What was that about, Moose? You keep saying it, mate. What's that on? Bottom. That's what we're after. He's only a little fella, definitely going to be a male. He's probably glad to see us, I don't know. Quite often they'll milk, but he's not doing so much. Alright, surely there's a couple more in there. There we go, nice little female. Um, that's what we're after, she's in beautiful condition. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, we worry about using big lures on these fish and 
with a mouth like that, you haven't really got to worry. They just suck them in, yeah. So uh, she's in the well and she's off to Naruma for a holiday. Our great perch searchers, when they catch a fish, they put them in their live wells, which have got recirculated water. They then bring the boats and the fish to our holding station. The perch are congregating in a certain salinity level. We hold the fish overnight in that same level, so the fish get on the plane in uh, the best possible condition. On the morning of the departure of the plane, we go through a process of screening every single fish. We make a call as to whether it's likely to be a male or female, and then we box them up accordingly. We put about 10 litres of water in each plastic bag. We put two or three broodfish in those bags, and then we charge the water with oxygen. And we do that to ensure that there's sufficient oxygen in the water to enable the fish to be transported for three and a half hours. The fish are boxed up and they're going to the airport, so that's good news. Three and a half thousand feet to four thousand feet, which will be our maximum height, and that's to stop the product from perishing and also the expansion of the gases in the containment bags. The plane had taken off, so it was all looking good. A storm cell had come in around the rumour. The pilot couldn't effectively get through and land. He went past the airfield and ultimately dropped through a hole in the clouds. The fish were landed, albeit about an hour and a half, two hours late. Just leaving the airport, we just picked up the purge. Yeah, so hopefully they're all fitting well when we get there. When you open the boxes when you get them here, it's always a lucky dip. They were in really good condition when we got them here today. Over the next day, I will increase the salinity level gradually. That'll get us to a point where we're able to give them the hormones to induce them to spawn. By the end of the week, we should have fry in the tank. This is a pond that we've got estuary perch in. These flew up three weeks ago. The little tiny ones in here are feeding on plankton. They'll be big enough, around four months old, to send back down to Victoria and stock in the waterways. You could have anywhere from 20,000 in a pond to around 50,000 in a pond. If we can produce around 100,000 estuary perch, we should be able to stock all seven estuary perch waters. Mm -hmm.